just behind me is the Romerel Dolmen. This is the third one in the Antequera region. It's a few kilometers away. It's actually going towards Lover's Rock, which you can just see in the background there. And you can see the trees upon it. This is a very interesting one. It's megalithic, but it's also got an incredible corbelled roof, much like we find in Ireland and at various other places across Europe and the world. So it's incredible masonry here that I'm sure the Vieira brothers who actually discovered this, the other Vieira brothers, very interested in the way they've done it. So it's got a few different chambers in here. Dates back is slightly earlier apparently than the other sites, but it's actually at, orientated to 199 or 200 degrees, which is very unusual orientation, the most extreme westernmost um, extremes uh, being picked up by uh, people who would witness it from inside the chamber. Let's get in and take a closer look. So we're just inside the main chamber here at Romeral, which is uh, slightly east, I think, or northeast from the other two mounds, two chambers. You can just see me walking through the chamber here. It's orientated strangely to 199 degrees, which is extreme west, what the most western region of the sky observed um, during the solar and lunar year. And you can see that the walls are made up of these beautiful corbel walls. I've already mentioned this, but I'm just giving you sort of some good shots of that. And then we have the large kind of blocks going across the ceilings here, which is a slightly different design to the other chambers, but it's really interesting. Um, and the fact that they've got multiple chambers within it is even more intriguing. You have the big blocks here going over the top. And obviously, I think it's about 70 meters wide the whole thing you can see this corbel style here is very similar uh, to what we find in some of the chambers also in new england uh, and also even in some of the mounds in ohio um, west virginia uh, and other places in north america something we noticed when we were researching the book giants on record jim Vieira and i um, realized that there's a certain style of this corbeling style with lintels across the top is something that's used in a lot of mounds so in a way this is really similar to what we find in north america obviously it's very similar to newgrange and many other passage chambers throughout europe um, it's a slightly different to the other ones we just looked at the um, Vieira and Menga chamber, which have monoliths on the side. Here we have like corbelled wall. Um, so let's get in there, get closer. So you're not allowed in this end chamber here, but it's very cool that they've put a mirror there so you can actually see the ceiling. And here, this is actually a reflection of the ceiling above it, which is very similar to what we've got in this chamber. But it's fascinating, it's got a huge block on the bottom there, and also corbelling going all the way up. It's got a couple of big stones on the left and right there as well. Very, very interesting. See this beautiful corbelled roof here. It's very beautifully done. I'm not sure it's reconstructed, but it's got a huge capstone on top. I've seen similar ones to this in France, in Brittany. I'm not sure what this is down here exactly. It looks like some kind of burial, perhaps. One of the other things they would all, they would do in these chambers, which this is quite a good example actually, is that it's a beehive chamber. So you've got the beehive shape. And you've got the the when the wind blows and it's blowing quite hard today actually um it would get you would get a build up of ions in the air and you get the separation of air molecules 
which would create some kind of electric charge, which is something that John Burke um, discussed in detail in his book, Seed of Knowledge, Stone of Plenty. And I'm getting the vibe that they would place seeds in here. And this whole area was, there was obviously a settlement here going back five or 6,000 years. And so this again, much like the dolmen we saw yesterday at Ronda, was probably a similar design. This could have been a development of the design before they just had megalithic blocks making up the stones. But I think they may have realized somehow, maybe through intuition or shamanic techniques that actually the beehive shape creates the best energy for these seeds to um, strengthen in and to become more fertile. And I would imagine this whole area was built with all this in mind. All these sites here were built with that in mind. Um, so yeah, I'm just very impressed with these sites here in Spain. It's sort of, they've kind of, kind of surprised me. I didn't realize the stones would be so large, especially in the manga dolmen. But also it looks like they had a, a technology here and they were working with the energies in the local landscape. So I've just climbed the hill, this mound, which is just east of the main sites of Antequera. Uh, it's in between, really, uh, the Romerol Dolmen and the Vieira Amenga Dolmen. And apparently they, a lot of people thought this was a mound. So I'm just sneaking up here. You're not supposed to come up here. So I'm hiding behind a tree at the moment, uh, which you can just see here. And I just want to just inspect the ground. They've ploughed it up. So there may be some artifacts here. There may be some... Uh, arrowheads, flints, things like that. Something that Andrew Collins has uh, sort of taught me about. So I'm, I'm gonna take a quick look, maybe do a little bit of dowsing up here. Uh, but when they did ex excavate up here a little while ago, a few years ago, they did find some graves here. They found some storage rooms, some what looks like kind of megalithic activity here, but not huge stones like we find in the dolmens. But we're gonna, let's go up there and see what we can find because it's just one of those interesting man-made sites in the area. Uh, not necessarily a dolmen or a chamber, a mound or anything, but still worthy of investigation. You just see behind me in the distance, that's the Menga mound with the chamber inside it, which is viewed from you know this potential archeological site here, which I'm just climbing to the top of now. So it seems like this was kind of in between the different mounds here and obviously the famous Lover's Mountain which is uh, over in the distance, we'll see that when we get to the top. So behind me in the distance there, you can actually see the great Simulacra, the face of the so-called Indian, or the Sleeping Beauty, or the Goddess, or the Lovers, uh, sort of Lovers Rock it's called. And before that, just over down, down below its chin in front of us, is the Romerol Mound. You can see that with all the trees on over there. I'll zoom in in a moment. And so these aren't exactly aligned with the other mounds, but this is kind of definitely on the path between them. Over there, behind me, you can see the other two mounds, the Romerol, and behind me, over there, you can see the famous Menga Mound and the Vieira Mound. So, they're all in this vicinity. That's why they really thought this one was of importance. And they did actually find some archeology span here, some cysts, some potential burials, some megalithic stonework, lots and lots of artifacts. So it's as though this hill was lived on as there were lots of lakes in the valley here going all around. So you can see some of the stonework already up here. Here's some examples here. This clearly shows the area where it was obviously excavated a few years ago 
see other examples here and here so there's not much to see it's not obviously there's nothing to see like we see at the other the main sites now to care but it's very very interesting nonetheless so we're looking at this from the top of the occupational mound here in Antikara and you can just see the great lover's rock or the simulacra the face in the landscape the mountain and on the left there you can just see the Romerol mound which has got a beautiful corbel chamber inside it and so this is the only area that you can actually see all the different sacred sites from and I believe all the sites around here were aligned and built according to that great face in the landscape which they probably revered as a god we have found a few pottery sherds up here, uh, not too many, just saw a few on the way up. So um, it's interesting because this is like, you know, as we see with Gebekli Tepe, this is like the occupational mound. Whereas the other sites were either the ceremonial places, which are probably and, they were where you placed your seeds to guarantee fertility. And probably they were kind of like the sacred temples of the ancients. Whereas this was the occupational mound where people would live around it. Um, obviously you can see any enemies come up from the lake from other areas um, you've got a good view of the horizon here for um, solar astronomical and lunar observation and you've got a view of all the different sacred sites here from this particular spot which is the only spot you can see everything from uh, both sides of it so it's very interesting very beautiful area here in Antikara <laughs> 